Grandpa Newby reporting for duty with the second half of yesterday's Ram 7 test flight. Now, yesterday we saw the Ram 7 in factory settings. In other words, just bare bones, nothing on it at all. And I found that a lot of these weapons are really good with bare bones. And what it does is it forces you to really consider what attachments you're going to put on it. Just don't throw on five attachments and go out and rage. I mean, you could do that, and a lot of people do. And that's something that I used to do do early on in my COD career towards the middle of my COD career. But I don't do that anymore, especially in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3, because the guns are pretty good. As you'll recall, after completing a few games with the bare bones Ram 7, this is what I said. So more bullets. I don't want to impact... The ADS speed could be a little better as sprint to fire. I want to maintain that strafe speed, though. 2.9 is good enough. And I want to funnel all the impacts to recoil. We can see if we can build one like that. Okay, so how did we do? Let's take a look at the configuration. First, we added the 40 round mag. I didn't quite go with the 60 round drum. I thought 40 rounds was good enough for four engagements and free for all four engagements and 6v6. And you can see that it really didn't hurt us all of that much when you look at the mobility and the handling. It didn't hurt anywhere else at all. But the ADS speed... It increased by 8%, but that 8% is still lower c composite wise than the bare bones, and we'll see why that is in a second. It's at 205 milliseconds. The final reload quick quickness is at 3.1 seconds, which isn't a lot uh, added on to the bare bones 30 round mag. And the ADS movement speed is actually 0.1 meters per second better, and that's because of some other attachments. Sprint to fire is at 140 milliseconds which is going to be significantly better and we'll go over all these numbers very quickly in just a second and the movement speeds were impacted so what did we do to offset that well first of all the haste 15 grip take and what that does for us it impacts the recoil but look at that 12 percent decrease in the sprint to fire time and remember i said yesterday that i was willing to give up recoil because i don't believe recoil is a real thing once you get onto the field of honor the ultralight stock pad and that helped with mobility and it helped significantly ads speed part of that 205 millisecond composite speed ads movement speed that's where we got the 0.1 meters per second increase in the ads movement speed and i didn't want to impact that with the 40 round mag this attachment offset that crouch movement speed is better as is movement speed the fss imperator barrel and that helps with the ads speed the composite number the sprint to fire in a big way the tactical sprint speed and the sprint speed and finally the x10 phantom 5 and it's got phantom in it i used to fly phantoms you know i'm gonna probably choose it hand stop and that helped 10 percent more sprint to fire and ads speed at 205 it helped offset some of the recoil we piled on and minimally affected the accuracy in terms of hip fire and tack stance. And we'll go over the numbers here in just a second, but let's talk about what the word speed means to Grandpa. And it may mean something different from what it means to you because it doesn't necessarily mean mobility, although that's part of it. For me, speed means ADS, ADS movement speed, and sprint to fire speed. If I can get those three as fast as possible without impacting too much anything else then grandpa is going to be happy because that's what you need in free for all and many of the smaller 6v6 maps so let's look at these numbers in more detail compare them to the bare bones and see how we change this weapon now the numbers in red went down, the numbers in green went up. The significant green numbers are the ones that are highlighted. So as we said, we were willing to give up recoil and we affected recoil very minimally. In exchange for that, we got much better aim down sight speed, 35 milliseconds faster. We got sprint to fire speed, 49 milliseconds faster. And ironically, the sprint speed, tax print speed, and ADS movement speed is slightly better. Better, so I expected that to go down with a heavier magazine. We did impact our reload quickness, but that's to be expected, but only at a third of a second. And fully empty, only two tenths of a second. So we're not even going to notice that. And speaking of recoil, let's go have a look and see what the recoil looks like on this configuration. First, I'm not going to try to control it. 
and it is slightly more than yesterday. This black area here, the hip fire did not get into it yesterday. It does today, but still, let's take a look at it again. It goes absolutely straight up and slightly to the right, so we should be able to control that. Now let's look at it aimed down sight. And it even goes up higher than it than the hip fire. So that's a strange thing. The amplitude of aim down sight recoil on all the weapons I've tested has been greater, watch the hip fire, than the recoil on the hip fire. I don't know if that's intentional. Can anybody explain that? Comment below if you can. Now let's just try to control it. Yeah, it's very easy to control. If you'll notice when I'm firing at long distances, as soon as the enemy dies, is gacked, my weapon tends to go down low and that's because I'm subliminally, easy for me to say, controlling the recoil. All right, let's go back. So there it is, the configuration that I selected. Let's take this configured Ram 7 onto the field of honor. See how it did for grandpa. See what it did to grandpa's enemies. Let's go. All right, let's go for it. Free for all. I got to try to bulldog grandpa. Ram seven. With extra bullets. Pretty quick time to kill there. And when I say TTK, people get so hung up on that. Rarely, for me anyway, is it going to be just a straight time to kill. There's going to be a wounded enemy... Some shots are going to go this way or that way. And it's going to be more bullets than you think because pulling down the trigger, releasing it, takes about 10 rounds with this gun, even if you get every round in the enemy. Sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. Grandpa starts off pretty good. You feel pretty confident with this weapon. The ADS is wonderful. Sprint to fire time is outstanding. And the movement speed is good enough when you're aimed down sight, the strafe speed. So Grandpa's piled up the streaks here. Just looking for a place to put them. There's a one. Muppet. Let's see. We'll put them right there. Leave, leave some gifts. Some welcome gifts, welcome mats. And see what happens. Decided not to go with a optic because really, I mean, there's a lot of visibility with the default optic on the Ram 7. And I got gacked by a Muppet. Free for all Muppets don't last long, and that's a good thing. Oh, coconut face. Tried to knife Grandpa. To sell him the farm with a knife. What's going on there? But Grandpa somehow gets behind. There's coconut face. There's a Muppet. With all those streaks, Grandpa can't believe he's just tied for first. Coconut face, man, he has taken a beating. How fast the bullets go out of that thing. It's coconut face again. So I think the 40 rounds, when we balanced everything, the only, the only negative was a slight negative with the recoil, as you'll recall. And that doesn't seem to be much of an impact at all. So I would load this thing up with 40 rounds, put some mobility on it to counteract those 40 rounds. And you got a weapon that's very, very hard to beat. There's a Snickers win. Up close, the thing is deadly. Do I prefer the Ram 9 up close? Depends. If it's a really tight map like Das House or something like that, I'll go Ram 9. Something where I'm going to have a little bit of distance shooting, Ram 7. And there's the first one under the, in the books, I guess. Look at there. I spawn in down 
zero to nine. How can they do that? Spawn you in nine kills behind in a free for all. I guess people are leaving this match. All right. Grandpa ain't making a lot of headway to start with. Oh, that guy's pretty quick. Doing some slide canceling there. Some Muppet in the corner. Oh, and he's Elvis. That's how you got to be Elvis by camping. I can catch that guy. So the mobility is fine with this weapon. And the bullets come out quickly as I've said. Whoa. That guy did a little juke. Almost got Grandpa, and he's only made up two gacks. Let's make sure there's not a Muppet there. Whoa. All right, come on. Here we go. <laughs> Here's Cheech Marin. Grandpa's imitating a Muppet. Now, Cheech is the is Elvis. I'm going to have to put together some multi-kills. But I think this is a weapon for it. In 30 rounds, mag, the default mag, I didn't see where, I don't see where I could have even had a prayer of coming back. Look at that guy. It's like canceling around and then. <laughs> He's got a sixth sense as to where I was. I was already aimed down scope when I'm coming around doing the quick scope. So like we said, we didn't mess with the ADS movement speed. In fact, we're one-tenth of a meter per second faster, which is going to help out here. Here comes Cheech. He is Elvis. Throw out the mosquito. Hopefully it'll do some work. It'll bite somebody. Uh, yeah. You're always a dead man going up that ladder. ladder, ladder. Even if you're Elvis, and there's a Muppet right in the classic corner there. See if he's still alive when we get back there. We've only managed to make up three kills. Oh, that'll help. And then somebody steps on. Cluster mine, another cluster mine victim. And all of a sudden we get a quad kill and a fury kill, I think. And we're on the way. To almost tied. Get our situational awareness back here. There's somebody up there. He's a dead man. Another cluster mine. And this weapon is performing just spectacularly. In fact, I think I'm going to make it a permanent class for AR challenges. And, ouch. Cluster mine's doing work. Let's put out the mosquito again. It would be disappointing to come back this far and lose because second place is the first loser. Cluster mine's doing work. And we'll turn on Cheech there. Just need three more Gax. One, two, And we won't even worry about this last ooh. <laughs> this last mosquito. I think the cluster mine did the work. So there's a Snickers victory. Hey, this weapon configured. It was good bear, but configured with just the extra bullets and the slight improvements we put on it with the attachments really turned it into something deadly. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Let me, let me know what your favorite config is for the Ram 7. Cheers and peace.